Sometimes you feel like a modern day comic, and sometimes you don't. So if you do, you'll just have to stick around and find out what this is. Go, go subscribe to We Love Comics. We love, and we do, we love comics. This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get one free pressing of your choice when you grade 10 with the code We Love Comics Free Press. Link in description. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris, and this is my channel, We Love Comics. And I have a modern day key issue I would like to share with y'all. And uh, as usual, I always make sure I say what the price is for the book. And um, after I show the book, I'm going to not, well, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. So hopefully you will stick around even after you see the comic. And of course, I always mention the price. So this way you guys can get a general idea of what to look out for. But uh, for this particular comic, it's going to be hard these days to be able to get the price that I did. Um, as you can see, this person, even though they put it in an envelope, see what they did with the cardboard and everything? They put cardboard on each side because I told them to do that. Um, biggest thing I tell people all the time, especially if you're buying from somebody on eBay, don't assume that the person knows or cares how to properly mail a comic book. Because if you're going to spend your hard-earned money on a book, you want to make sure it arrives in the way that you, pur you purchased it on eBay for. So... Don't be afraid to ask them, you know, send a message and say, you know, can you please package this comic with, um, you know, extra bags and boards and, you know, extra security and please can you make sure you take care of it? And you'd be amazed. Like some won't. It's, it's just part of the thing. You can't control what everybody does. But if you make the best attempts, that's all you can do. So try your best and you will see. All right, so you're probably already going to know what this is. So this is Batwang Damned. Now, this isn't the regular edition. This is actually the one per store variant. This is the um, uncorrected proof, which is one per store. Now, as you can see, let me focus this, let me position it so you can see, it actually comes with a certificate from DC. It says, visionary storytellers, provocative stories, and I'm reading this whole thing for you, and world's greatest heroes. That's what awaits you in, the, in DC Black Label. Um, let me see if it says anything about it. Um... Well, I mean, if you, know, you can't read it anyway. There's nothing in there that really tells you anything different. It's just basically a synopsis. Synopsis. Philopolis. Falafel. Well, it talks about <laughs> the Batman Damned. So this looks to be in really good condition. I've seen some of these books already selling for... I've seen some people trying to sell it for $1,000. That, to me, is crazy. But I see people already bidding on this book, and it's up to about $300 with still, like, three days to go. Now, I'm going to give the price, and then I'm going to give a little, a little information on this, so I hope you'll listen to this, because it might help you for future purchases. Um, I paid, with shipping and handling, $72.39. Now, that's not the best, but it's definitely not what people are paying now. So, to get this for under $100 at this point... I've seen ones where they're labeling it very fine with color breaking creases all along the spine and people are spending $150, $200 for those. So I think the next month, like the following month after the ones that I'm about to send out, I think I will get this graded. Um, I mean, it's controversial in a way. I th it's definitely a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that worked. Um, so let me talk about this book a little bit. There were a couple of people that left some comments saying, you know, they're really upset with the way this um, book skyrocketed. It basically caught a lot of people off guard. Now, is it a major event that happens in here? Um, well, not really. But is it something that is a first? Yes. Is it something that's controversial? Yes. 
did it fly off the shelves? Once people found out, it absolutely did. So there were people that were complaining about how fast this book got out of reach. Now, here's my thing. When it comes to anything in life, it's supply and demand. Now, obviously, DC knew there was something about this, otherwise they wouldn't have done it. But they didn't print 7 million copies of these books. Especially with, as you can see here, the uncorrected proof advanced reader's copy. That was one per store. But even the regular ones are selling over 100 to $150 at this point. Now, here's my thing. And this is why I want you to listen to this and be careful for future references, especially if you miss this opportunity. Now, will it continue to go up or is it just the hype? It's hard to say. I do think if you spend $1,000 for this book right now, I think that's way overpriced. But who knows? It could be some one of those things that's a, a one-time situation because they've already said that the digital print is going to be censored and all other prints of this book will be censored. So the first print is the only print where you can actually get the uncensored version. Now, obviously, I'm not going to open this book and check it out. I don't really care. I bought it for the collectability. <clears throat> but I want to teach all of you a, um, a little thing about business and why you got to jump on things sometimes and take the chance. As soon as I heard about this, now when I was at the comic book store, I picked the regular book up, had it in my hand, looked at the six ninety nine price tag, didn't know about, you know, Wang Manor, and I put it down. Because I didn't, I, I mean, I glanced through it, but I didn't look at the last page. I guess maybe in retrospect, I'm glad I didn't. That would have been an interesting shock. But I put it down. I thought six ninety nine was too much. I wasn't going to pay for it. So I put it down. When I got home and people were telling me when I did my live show, when they were telling me the controversial situation in here, I knew that there would probably be people that would complain about this book. And, and rightfully so, especially if you're a mother. The last thing you want your kids to see, because a lot of children collect comic books, is to see this kind of nudity. Whether it's male or female, is a re you know, regardless. I don't want, if I had children, I wouldn't want to have my 12-year-old kid subjected to seeing naked women or men. So it goes both ways. I think they honestly did it because this day and age, with all the situations going on, I think they thought it was safer to show male nudity than female nudity so it would keep them from being sexist, which in a way, that's irony in its finest. But I want you to think about this. As soon as I found out about it, I went on eBay, found the cheapest one I could find, and purchased it right away, knowing that no matter what price I paid, I was definitely going to underpay. Because most people don't find out information until a day or two later. And when it comes to something that's going to be trending or hot or something that's, you know, limited print runs, you know, people are going to pounce on it once they find out. So the idea is you got to be the early bird that gets the worm. Now, to the people that are not happy with the price, well, this is what I would ask. Did you do your research on this book and knew in advance what could be happening in this book? And if, if not, did you get it when you went to the comic book store? And if you didn't, then did you call your comic book store? Because maybe people will say I was working. Did you call your comic book store and ask them if they can hold one? Also, did you pre-order it? Now, the people that missed out and are upset about the price, people are very well aware that there is a digital version of this, and there will be second and third printings, which are uncensored. So are you mad that you didn't get the uncensored one? Or are you mad about the fact that you didn't get it because you wanted to read it? Because if you want to read it, you can get a digital copy. It will be censored. But it's going to be a lot cheaper than spending what is up to three, four, five hundred and up for this book. Even like I said, the regular copy is going to be about 150 or 200. The idea is to not get upset. I mean, there's plenty of books that I've missed out on. I didn't get the first appearance of Batman Who Laughs the day it came out. I didn't get the first appearance of Weapon H the day it came out. I missed the opportunity on the first appearance of Ghost Rider, the one in 25 variant. 
That book's like six, seven hundred dollars now. I'm not beating myself up for it, and I'm not mad that other people got it. If they got it, congratulations. It's my fault that I didn't pick it up. It's my fault I didn't do the research. I'm not upset with the way the price goes because it's all based on supply and demand. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still trying to get over walking pneumonia, so I'm almost there, but every now and then, so forgive me if I cough up a lung. But my point is, <coughs> excuse me, I'll give you a prime example of something, of how economics works and how businesses work. Let's assume a half gallon of orange juice for your store, you know, your shopping marts around you, is probably, let's say it's on average $4 for a half gallon. Just, I mean, whether it is or isn't it's irrelevant. Let's just assume a half gallon of orange juice of a famous brand is $4. And they get their oranges from Florida. Because, of course, locally grown, it's going to be cheaper to be able to bring them in to the local stores. So let's assume in the wintertime, there was a severely cold winter in Florida killing dozens of orange crops. Which means there's going to be less oranges, which means there's going to be less orange juice produced. Or they're going to have to import it from somewhere else, like Costa Rica or somewhere down south, which is going to cost a lot more. What do you think is going to happen to the price of the orange juice? Do you think, one, it will lower, two, it will stay the same, or three, it will rise in price? So here's my thing. If you're mad that you missed the opportunity and you're mad about the price, well, why can't you get a digital copy? Why can't you wait for the second print? Now that you know there's going to be a second print and probably a third print and probably a fourth print and probably a fifth print, all uncensored, what's to stop you from going to your comic book dealer and say, hey, I missed the opportunity on the first print. I would like to read this book very much so. I would like to have an actual copy because maybe I just don't want a digital copy. Can you put on my pull list a second print or a third print or a fourth print of this book so I can pay the cover price of six ninety nine. End of problem. Or is it people are mad that they didn't jump the gun and now the price is out of their range and instead of taking responsibility for their choices to not only do or not do something, they would rather yell at the people and blame the comic book community for raising the prices when it's all a simple economic situation of supply and demand. Now, I only have one of these books. If I would have known people are going to be selling this book for $500 and up, I would have bought multiple copies of this book. So yeah, I paid $72.39 for one copy. Hindsight is always 2020. I'm glad I got this one, but I also saw people an hour or two before or a day or two, two before were buying this book, the same book here I'm showing here, for $25 and $30. So I paid double what they paid. I'm not mad at them. Good luck. I'm glad they got it. So my, what I'm trying to teach people is you have to pounce. You have to do your due diligence. I tell this to people all the time. Research. Put in the effort. Take responsibility for not only what you do, but what you don't do. So if you chose to pass this one up, if you chose to wait until the last minute, if you chose not to call your comic book store, if you chose not to put this on your pull list months in advance, take responsibility for it and say, you know what? I missed out on this one. Or pay the current prices if you think it's worth it. Now again, I'm not going to tell anybody at two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars to buy this book. I don't know if it has any long-term staying power. It may or may not, because it could be something that is never tried again. It could be a controversial situation where they maybe pull some of them off the shelf. Or like I said, the digital print and the other, any other prints are going to be totally censored. So this might be one of those one-and-done situations, and that may last the test of time. I don't know. That's why I always tell people, when you are getting a comic for investment purposes or a speculation, there are risks involved. So if this book 10 years from now ends up to be a $5 book, or you could find it in the dollar bin, you know what? I still won't regret it. If it ends up a $1,000 book, 
I'm going to be very happy I bought one and disappointed I didn't buy multiple. Because let's say in five years, let's say this book's $5,000. I don't ever think that's going to happen. But let's say in a crazy world, this book in a 9.8 ends up $5,000. Well, even at two, three, four hundred now, that would be a steal compared to what it would be worth then. So the idea is trust your instincts. If you mess up, hey, it's part of life. Don't beat yourself up. There's going to be plenty of opportunities you're going to win. There's going to be plenty of opportunities you're going to lose. So don't beat yourself up and don't get too emotionally distraught or too high if you do it. I'm not sitting here bragging, look at the great deal. I'm trying to use this as a learning tool to teach people to do your research. It is up to you to learn about these things. And like I said, I didn't even know about it until I learned from it because I have amazingly smart subscribers. And that's why I try and do, when I do the Wednesday must-have comic sec live shows, I try and do them as early as I can because I know if I miss a book, one of my subscribers is going to tell me about it. And that means I can get right on the phone and say, hey, is so-and-so copy still available? Oh, it is? Can you please put one or two or three aside for me? And I'll pick it up next week or I'll pick it up tomorrow. And you know what they'll say if it's available? Sure. Or I'll go on eBay and make a couple of purchases right there. So don't get mad at the prices. People buy things that are desirable, that are going to be rare, that are going to be what everybody wants. I tell people time and time again, this is based on emotion, pure and simple. Because like I said, if you're mad that you didn't get this book, well, get the digital copy. I'm sure that's what, $5, $6, let's say, heck, $10. It'll be uncensored, so did you really need to see Batman's Batawang? Or what about when the next print comes out? So you can get this book. You can read this book. You don't have to spend the money that some people are spending right now. But don't get mad at people for doing it. Because then what's the sense of anybody having any collectible? You know, people collect stamps. People collect coins. People collect baseball cards. Do you think people collect them? You know, people always say, oh, I collect it because I love it. Most people collect things because they have some kind of future value. Now, of course, that's not everyone and it's not everything, but how many people do you know have videos right now bragging about their paperclip collection? You don't. You see a lot of people talking about comic books and other investments. What do you think gets the most views about on just in the comic book community? People that make videos about the next hottest comic you need to get right away or somebody showing you Amazing Spider-Man 300 for the 697th time this month? Reality is reality, whether you want to believe it or not, whether it angers you or not, you know, that's something you have to deal with. So I want to try and help my subscribers to put in the effort it takes. You get what you give. If you put no effort into something, why would anyone be shocked they're not getting the effort back? So if you missed out on this opportunity, make sure you learn from that mistake and don't do it again. And if somebody wants to get mad at me for having it, well... You could have had it just as well. You still can have it. Just not mine. Because I won't be selling this anytime soon. I will, like, not this month's batch, but next month's, I think I will be getting this one sent in to get graded. But until then, I want to thank you all for listening. Um, if you have watched this far, tell me what it is I'm holding right here. And this is you could just say it's a blue tumbled stone and that's it so don't forget to wait until the end to see who's today's surprise subscriber shout out if you want to be one you just have to hit subscribe and also please leave some comments let me know what you think i uh, prospect your opinion and i want to hear if you got it and what you think about what i said about it so that's it thanks for watching don't forget it's not you it's not i it's we love comics and from batman to you uh, I'm not going to use a penis joke. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to connect with me on Facebook, you can click right here. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, you could click right here. If you'd like to get 2% cash back on your comic book purchases off of eBay, you can click here. If you want to hit subscribe and join the channel, we'd love for you to click here. Now, on to the surprise subscriber shout-out.